Welcome to CAT Tutorials. And in this video, we're going to be doing practice problem 2.13. Now for the first part of the question, we are asked to find V1 and V2. So let's do that. Just to get you through the process of finding V1, which is over here, and V2, which is over there. So we have a current source here. And what we can do is divide this current to go in that direction so it goes up and then at this junction or at this node here it splits into some current which goes that way and some current which goes that way so the total current which comes here and there is this current because after this current leaves here it's going to split into those two so now we're going to combine these two to form one resistor here. So we can find the value of this current, which goes in that direction. And then these two, we can just simply combine. They're in series, so they have the same current. This amounts to 4K or 4 kilo ohms when we add the 1K and the 3K. So for this side, for this side, it's simple. You just have 4K ohms which is 1k plus 3k ohms then we have the current source in between of 30 milli amperes now let's call the current which goes that side i1 let's call it i1 and the current which goes this side let's call it i2 so to combine these two these two share two nodes which is the node at the top and the node at the bottom so now the 5k in parallel with 20k so we have 5k multiplied by 20k divided by 5k plus 20k so this is 5 times 20 which is 100 divided by 25 so we should get 4k 4 kilo ohms so that's 4 kilo ohms we now add it to this circuit yeah. So as you can see, these two resistors are equal, which also means the current would be divided equally. But if that weren't the case, then you'd apply the current division formula. So we already know that I1 and I2 are equal because these two resistors are equal as well. But let's use a formula to confirm what I just said. So for current division, we're going to divide the current current division to find I1. You multiply the current source value by the other resistor which is present in the connection. So in this case, they're the same, so it won't look like that. But let's let's name this R1 and R2. So to find the current I1, which is across R1, you multiply the current source by the other one, which is R2. So 4K, and then divided by the resistor values, both values, both of them are 4K, so 4K plus 4K. So now this is 2 4K, and that is 1 4K. So that, that is the same as half multiplied by 30 milliamperes. And so your answer should be 15 milliamperes. And the same applies for I2. So both I1 and I2 are equals to I1 and I2, I1 and I2. Both of them are equals to 15 milliamps. You can do the same for I2 to find the other 15 milliamps. Also, since 30 is the total and you found one of the currents, we know that I1 plus I2 is equal to the current source. So you can just simply subtract I1 from the total, which is 30, and that should give you 15 milliamps for I2. So whichever method you use, it's, it's, it's fine. So now we have I1 and I2, so we aren't done because that's not what the question asked for. So I2 goes there, goes that way, and I1 goes that way. So now, as you can see, I1 goes through the positive of V1 first. So using Ohm's law, which says V is equal to IR, 
we're going to say V1 is equal to I1 multiplied by the resistor value present. And the resistor value present is 3K. So we find, we found, sorry, we found I1 to be 15 milliamperes and we found R to be 3K as given in the question. So the answer for V1 should be 45 volts. The milli and the k cancel out, so 3 times 15 is 45, so that's what you have. And now, in, in this case, on this side, we have I2 going this way, but it splits. It splits at this point. So you can take this I2 as a current source and split the current again, yet again. So here's what we do. To find the current, let's call it, let's call it I3. I3, which goes through the 20K, we're gonna say I3 is equals to the current source, which is I2, which is coming in here. So I2 splits into that and that. So we're gonna say I2 multiplied by the other resistor, apart from the 20K, which we're interested in, to the other one, which is five, 5K. So multiplied by 5K, and then divided by 5K plus the resistor, which we're dealing with. So I3 is going to be equal to that. So we know that I2, we found I2 to be 15 milliamperes. So this is 5 divided by 25, which is 1 over 5. And then into that, it will be, suppose all of the cancel out, so 1 over 5. So this should be 3 milliamperes. That is the value of I3, which is the current which, go, which goes through the 20K. So now again, using Ohm's law, V2 is equals to I3 multiplied by the resistor value of 20. So we find I3 to be the 3 milliamps, and then it's going to be multiplied by 20K. K and the milli cancel out, so you only have 3 times 20, which is 60, 60 volts. And that is your V2. So we've solved the first part of the question, V1 and v2 we're now going to do the second part of the question which asks us for the power dissipated in the 3k resistor and the power dissipated in the 20k resistor so using the power formula p is equal to vi so for the power dissipated in 3k it's going to be equals to v1 multiplied by I1. So V1 multiplied by I1. And we know both of these values from the first part of the question. So V1 is 45 volts and I1 is 50 milliamperes. So multiplying these two, your answer should be 675 milliwatts. Now moving on to the power dissipated in the 20K, that should be V, which is V2. So V2 multiplied by I3. So V2 we found to be 60 and I3, I3 was 3 milliamperes. So 3 milliamperes multiplied by 3 milliamperes. And the answer should be 180 milliwatts. And those are your answers for part B of the question. The final part of the question, which is part C, asks us to find the power supplied by the current source. So if you look, this is one node, and this is all the one node. So the position of the current source here, as you can see, it shares two nodes with V2, or this resistor, which has a voltage uh, value across it of V2. So this current source is parallel to that resistor which has V2 across it. So therefore, the current source also has V2 
voltage across it. So now using the same formula, now we're in part, doing part C, the power supplied by the current source is equal to VI. And now the power is calculated as the voltage across there, which is V2, then multiplied by the current, which is its value, the value of the current source itself, which is 30 milliamperes. And so the power is V2, V2 is 60, multiplied by 30 milliamperes, right? And the answer should be 1.8 watts.